progressive, respectful, mentoring, compassionate. These are the values of Palmdale Regional Medical Center. And now we proudly present Palmdale Regional Radio. Here's Melanie Cole. A new radiation-free therapy has recently been approved by the Food and Drug Administration for prostate tissue ablation, which also means that it can be used to treat prostate cancer. My guest today is Dr. Eugene Rajaratnam. He's board-certified urologist and board-certified in anti-aging and regenerative medicine, and he's a member of the medical staff at Palmdale Regional Medical Center. Dr. Raj, welcome to the show. Let's just start with some of the mainstays of therapy for prostate cancer and what's been the main therapy that you do? Well, you know, prostate cancer has many different treatment options. The one that we do in the U.S. most commonly is robotic surgery, where we remove the whole prostate using a robot, robot-assisted. And that's, you know, caught the fancy of all of the urologists uh, in, in, uh, in America. It's also been done in other countries, but if you go to Europe, let's say, the mainstream treatment is not surgical. They do non-surgical therapies, more focal, just ablating the cancer or doing something without having to cut into people. And uh, I trained in Germany and in another, like in uh, Dominican Republic, training on two different machines that do tissue ablation using high-intensity focus ultrasound. Basically, it's sound waves that are focused and you get heat at the, at the focal point and you direct it to the tissue that you want to ablate in this situation as the prostate gland. The other options would be radiation. Again, I've, people do that a lot, but I see a lot of patients with complications from radiation. And uh, if you have a high, high, uh, highly invasive cancer, I don't think radiation works very well. It may work for lower-grade cancers, but for a lower-grade cancer, why give radiation when there are other less invasive and less complicated uh, therapies? The other option is cryoablation, where we put needles into the prostate under anesthesia and ablate the cancer by freezing it to minus 50 degrees Celsius. So those are the common ways we treat cancer. Of course, there's hormone therapy, which I usually start when I diagnose the patient, at least to stop the cancer from growing until we decide what options are the best for the patient. And I explain all the options. And I generally like to do less invasive procedures. If they work, why not? Well, I, I, I mean, I certainly agree with you, and, and why not? And you can try all of these different therapies and speak to your physician about them, but people have heard about focal therapy, about something that's very direct. Tell us about this new HIFU, or high-intensity focused ultrasound. High-intensity focused ultrasound uh, has been in development and has been in treatment uh, for probably over 20 years. Like I said earlier, I've trained on this machine in Germany, where that's the first treatment and that's the only treatment they use for many patients. And uh, that was over 10 years ago, 2007. At that point, uh, Professor Turov in Munich had already done over 10,000 patients with very good results. Initially, they were doing therapy without doing anything else to the prostate, like resecting part of it and do the treatment. So they noticed during the latter part of their study that if you resect the tumor a little bit or make a channel in the prostate so the patient can urinate better and remove some of the tissue and leave behind the uh, the core of the, not the core, but the periphery of the prostate gland and treat that, you get a better result than trying to treat a whole large prostate. So there is some restrictions to how much you can treat. Preferably, it should be within 30 grams or about an ounce. I think that's the best size for the prostate. So obviously, it may not be a very good treatment if your prostate is very large, in which case you have to shrink it first. You can either give a shot of Lupron, which is an anti-hormone treatment. It not only stops the cancer from growing, it also shrinks the cancer. So the patients, number one, feel better. Cancer is controlled for the time being as long as they're on the hormone therapy and they're in preparation for a more definitive treatment, either cryoablation or hypho. Tell us about some of the advantages and disadvantages for the patient to use HIFU and, and who might be a candidate. You said if they have a very large prostate, then probably not. Or if there's what, multiple tumors? Tell us a little bit about patient selection criteria. I think the most attractive uh, reason why people would want HIFU is because we can control the tumor ablation to just the prostate without are doing any harm to the blood vessels and the nerves that are right adjacent to the prostate around 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock position. So you can actually see those blood vessels pulsating and you know there's a nerve right next to it and you can control 
control the treatment in such a perfect uh, way that it does not go outside the prostate capsule. So that's number one. So you, number one reason people choose that would be a younger patient or somebody who does not want to have uh, the erectile function destroyed from treatment, which happens quite often with radiation surgery. Sure, that's that. a very common side effect, yes. Yeah, that's one of the you know, major side effects of prostate cancer surgery or even radiation. Patients end up being impotent or incontinent or both. So there's a way less chance that you're going to have those problems when you do HIFU because it's so precise and uh, robotically done, so you don't even have to mess with it too much, but you have to watch the treatment live so you can control where to, where to focus that treatment. And also it can be done focally, meaning if let's say the cancer is only in the right side of the prostate, on the top part of the prostate, and not in the rest of the gland on that side and the other side. You can direct the treatment straight to that area and just ablate that and maybe a small area around it. Also, we do MRI studies before the prostate cancer is treated, and you can actually identify with MRI the region where the prostate cancer is located, and you can take that image and fuse it into the ultrasound image on the prostate cancer treatment machine, which is a HIFU machine, and actually destroy the cancer and then do an MRI later, and you don't see the cancer anymore. So wow. it's very precise. And and what are you seeing yeah, for amazing. outcomes? That's quite amazing. Well, the outcomes, you know, since it's only been used in America for a short period, it was only uh, FDA approved latter part of last year. But there have been studies being done for the last couple of years, and the treatment op- treatment results are just as good as any other treatment. That's really fascinating. So give us your bottom line on this treatment and what you would like listeners to ask their urologist if they're in, if if a spouse is in with her husband and are trying to figure out what kinds of treatments to look at and what do you want them to ask you about this type of high food treatment for prostate cancer? Well, like I said, uh, the most important reason why they would do that is to conserve their sexual function. So if you want to kill the cancer but maintain your lifestyle, I would say HIFO is probably the number one option. Any other option is risky for erectile function as well as incontinence. The other option is it can be done. The reason why you want it is because it can be done outpatient. So there's no cuts involved. There's no incisions. It's all done uh, transrectally. So you act, basically you can walk out of the procedure and go and have dinner at night with your family. So it's a very non-invasive. You don't need a hospital stay. There's no incisions, hardly any pain. The only thing you need is probably a catheter for a few days so that the initial swelling from the treatment will be overcome by having a catheter and then you take it out. The tissue, of course, sloughs off. And then it takes a little while for that slough tissue to fall off the prostatic fossa or the uh, the region right around the mouth of the bladder. So some patients have a little trouble passing that, so they may require treatment uh, with a catheter for a little longer time. So it's low risk, outpatient, no incisions. You go home and do whatever you do, and you maintain a lifestyle. Absolutely fascinating information. Dr. Raj, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your expertise on this new and unique treatment for prostate cancer. So many people will be interested to hear this. You're listening to Palmdale Regional Radio with Palmdale Regional Medical Center. For more information, please visit palmdaleregional.com. Physicians are independent practitioners who are not employees or agents of Palmdale Regional Medical Center. The hospital shall not be liable for actions or treatments provided by physicians. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks so much for listening.